Anyone who has traveled through space with Captain James T. Kirk or Luke Skywalker knows many of the dangers that can await us. An unstable wormhole, a supernova, or a black hole are unwillingly seen, just like the monsters from Alien and the threatening Dominion. But did you know that the greatest danger for our solar system is patiently waiting for us just beyond the Milky Way? The hidden, so-called Great Attractor is a monster, a star eater that could control the fate of our Sun and the Earth. Our solar system is traveling. We travel at an unimaginable speed of about 2.2 million kilometers per hour through the cosmos, including all other planets of our solar system. In doing so, we outline a circular orbit, and we do so without being consciously aware of our tour in any way, nor do we know where the journey will take us. Actually, we should arrive at some point right where we started. The catch is, however, that the circle becomes more and more narrow, or in other words, it becomes more and more spiral. At the same time, we are drifting towards a point that was only discovered by researchers a few years ago, the Great Attractor. This star cluster is not visible from Earth because it is cleverly hidden behind the Milky Way. Only state-of-the-art technology has made it possible for researchers to take a look at this area. More detailed investigations have raised more new questions that need to be answered because the Great Attractor appears strange, mystical, and in many ways, illogical. But one thing is certain, the mass gathered there is so gigantic that the Great Attractor attracts everything like a super magnet. It does not seem to matter how far away the stars are, because all systems known to us seem to be heading inevitably towards this one point. The phenomenon is about 150 million light years away, and it could be found pretty much in the same direction as the center of our galaxy. However, our visibility there is severely restricted because dense clouds of gas and dust block our view. But we can see how our galaxy and other nearby galaxies are moving towards the big attractor. There must be a reason for this. It suggests that either there must be a large mass or that the attraction is due to something even stranger and more fantastic. When evidence of the Great Attractor was first discovered in the 1970s, there was no way to see through the zone of gas and dust the zone of avoidance. While this zone absorbs much of the visible light from beyond, gas and dust do not block as much infrared and X-ray light. As X-ray astronomy became more powerful, we could begin to see objects in this region. What we found was a large supercluster of galaxies in the region of the Great Attractor, known as the Norma Cluster. Norma has a mass of about 1,000 trillion suns. That's a total of several thousand galaxies, while the Norma Cluster has a large mass and local galaxies are moving towards it, its presence does not explain the complete motion of local galaxies. The mass of the Great Attractor is not large enough to cause such stellar migration. If we look at an even larger region of galaxies, we find that the local galaxies and the large attractor are moving towards something even larger. It is known as the Shapley Supercluster. It consists of more than 8,000 galaxies and has a mass of more than 10 million billion suns. In fact, the Shapley Supercluster is the most massive cluster of galaxies within a billion light years. And we and every galaxy in our corner of the universe are moving towards it. As we race through the cosmos, gravity affects the path we take. We are inevitably attracted to the Great Attractor. Researchers have now discovered that the glorious title may be a bit exaggerated. In fact, it seems to be just a normal collection of galaxies created by chance and hidden away. What do you think about the Great Attractor? And what are your hopes for what we'll discover in this region of space that we are drifting towards? Post your opinion in the comments. Cosmography illuminates the image of the Great Attractor a little bit. It's a digital tour de force and one of the most advanced computer programs of all, cosmography. Billions of fixed points had to be entered so that the universe with all its stars, planets, moons, and other celestial bodies could be mapped and displayed in three dimensions. In this way, star clusters of incredible size could be displayed. For example, Coma Berenices, the Centaurus Cluster, or the Norma Cluster. These three clusters of galaxies form the Centaurus Supercluster, which appears as a node in the web of the cosmos. Five filaments of matter meet here which is still unique to date. With the help of this software, the scientists have succeeded in illuminating the so-called Great Wall, 
where the Como Heap is also located. The Great Wall surpasses its earthly namesake in China by many dimensions. The filament is about 200 million light years away, roughly in the direction in which the constellation Virgo can be seen in the sky. Here, countless galaxies have positioned themselves in a belt that, with a length of 500 million light years, is almost beyond human imagination. The height of the Great Wall is also impressive at 300 million light years, while its thickness is almost manageable at about 15 million light years. Where the constellation of the Scorpion adorns the skies, there is the Norma Cluster. Pretty much exactly here, the Great Attractor has formed its gravitational center. All in all, this astrological phenomenon is composed of several tens of thousands of galaxies, which are positioned about 150 to a maximum of 250 million light years away from the Milky Way. Will the Great Attractor devour the Earth? At least not during our lifetime, that much is certain. It's also likely that our star system will never be captured by the Great Attractor. The reason for this is the expansion of the universe. In this expansion, the Great Attractor moves away from us faster than we move towards it. This is why the distance of the Earth to the deadly vacuum cleaner is getting bigger and bigger instead of smaller. And this, despite our incredible travel speed. Can you imagine these dimensions, these extents, and these speeds? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. In 2016, a research report was published on the website of the International Center for Radio Astronomy Research, ICRAR. It involved a research project led by Lister Stavely Smith, a group of scientists from the University of Western Australia and the collective Curtin University. Within it, the researchers stated that they had so far been able to identify 883 galaxies in the Great Attractor, of which more than two-thirds were previously unknown to science. However, even these sky researchers could not explain why the Great Attractor has such a brilliant attraction because its mass is actually too small for this. In fact, the thoughts and logic of Albert Einstein continue to have an impact to the present day. The principle that applies today, according to which we do not measure space-time because we cannot measure it, cannot be correct. One thing is certain, gravity is a property of matter, but not a property of electromagnetism. The hypothesis is that protons in all forms of matter are the source of the force of attraction, gravity, in the vicinity of matter. One novel discovery is that the absence of matter creates a repulsive anti-gravity force that is much weaker than gravity. However, electrons do not contribute enough mass to have a truly significant effect on gravity. The geometry of matter, or its absence, causes a force field to be generated. And force fields can be measured. In addition, it has been proven that gravity is faster than the speed of light, for which a quantum tunnel was used. The presence of moving matter generates a tensile force and a gravitational force with negative polarity. Conversely, this means that the absence of moving matter produces a thrust force and a gravity force with positive polarity. In the margin, the two different types of magnetism must be considered. It's also an established fact that there is also a gravitomagnetism in addition to the electromagnetism known so far. Gravitomagnetism is created by the presence or absence of matter as soon as it moves in the universe. To explain, in gravitational magnetism, it's not absolutely necessary that metals are present. Without Einstein's theory of relativity, it is not possible. General relativity is a theory of gravity developed by Albert Einstein between 1907 and 1915. According to this, the observed attraction between masses results from the distortion of space and time by these masses. General relativity has become an essential tool in modern astrophysics. It forms the basis for the current understanding of black holes and of regions in space where the gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape. If we take the latest findings as well as observations and Einstein's theoretical foundations together, we come to the conclusion that the large attractor could be a gravitational anomaly. It's also influenced by other superclusters and star clusters, which is why multiple forces occur in all directions. The decisive factor for the actual direction of an approach seems to be that these forces either cancel each other out completely or partially or even increase. Wherever the journey goes, 
it still takes time. Not only is the cosmos evolving, but also humanity. It can only be hoped that mankind will be able to keep pace with the cosmos, so that we'll be able to react adequately to cosmic influences in millions of years, should this become necessary. What do you think? Will we have to look for a new planet? Or can we prevent future catastrophes with techniques that are still unknown today? Share your thoughts with us and post them in the comments section.